I get to live in my world, I can live in yours for a few, it's all good. I've been out on some bad days. By the way, don't think about messing with me. I'm not one of these whippers that faggots, you know what I mean? Just don't mess with me, don't talk smack to me, don't, don't heckle me. I'm on the edge, man, I'm serious. You mess with me, I will go to the front door, I will face San Francisco, just get down, get down! And we'll fill this bitch up, okay? You don't even know me. Right. Chase the rainbow, because you don't know. I have just had some bad dates. You know, this guy is so pissed off, she's like, oh my god, you're gonna love Brian, you're gonna love him. He just likes to smile. He just likes to smile. She didn't have to tell me you didn't have any front freaking teeth, you know what I mean? I'm like, no teeth, I'm like, dude, you're gay, be creative, take some chiclets together, wedge that up in there, you know? Give me a little warning before you send the toothless fairy knock, knock, knocking at my door, you know? But like suddenly I'm out on a romantic dinner date with a freaking jack-o'-lantern. <laughs> How am I supposed to enjoy my quarter pound of cheese when I got him to poop? I'm just kidding. I I think it's actually kind of funny, like, what's, what, you know, the straight people or the gays we like to call you guys the breeders. Um, guys, I'd like to hook up your gay guy friends with each other, which is very, very cool of you guys, but I don't know what goes through your heads when you introduce two gay dudes to each other, like, oh, Matt, this is Brian, Brian, this is Matt. And then you step back and you watch. <laughs> what am I, a freaking science project or something? I know, what do you think's gonna happen? A gay dance talk? Oh, yeah! We're just gonna bust it out, you know? I mean, we are, but don't stereotype us, is what I'm trying to say. Wrong, wrong, wrong. <laughs> so, uh, you're a little thing? What branch is that? Army. Army, nice, nice, nice. I actually, uh, I actually served four years in the Navy myself, I'm a veteran. Thanks, thank you. Two people, I appreciate that. Right. I know, a gay guy in the Navy, who knew? <laughs> served four years in the Navy, I've been in a couple Army guys, but that's all another story off <laughs> Hey, what? Is that not loud? My parents actually encouraged me to go in the military. They used to call me Gomer, like Gomer Pyle. I don't think my parents realized just how much like Jim Neighbors I was going to turn out to be in the end, you know? Nobody gets that reference because you're all 12. All right, um, moving right along. Uh, anyone been to Los Angeles ever? Hollywood, you guys have never? Piece of crap, isn't it? Craziest freaking city ever. And I'm going to tell you something. If you're in LA and you're broke and you need to make your entertainment dollar holler, get on the city bus. That is where all the craziness is going on. I've seen it all go down. Drug deals, freaking tranny fights. I mean, the, the whole, I mean, it's just insane. And I was waiting for my bus one day on the corner of, uh, what was it, uh, where's that at? He's crap and kill a faggot. That's where I was at, exactly. <laughs> now, seriously, there's a, <laughs> there's a 99 cent store where all the Latin trannies shop at, and there's nothing funner than a, a grown man in a bad dress, bad makeup, and a cart full of Virgin Mary Guadalupe candles. There's just nothing better than that. So I was standing there waiting for my bus, and this guy, this homeless dude, comes up to me and he's all like, you know, asked me if I had a cigarette. I was like, no, 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 a cigarette, man. And this guy just mm -hmm. pops his pants and cried, hey! <laughs> on a long list of things I thought I was going to encounter on the way to work that morning, homeless guy dick not on the list, folks. <laughs> so I decided to take refuge in the Taco Bell KFC combo building. Yes, that's right, small town America. We're combining your favorite fast foods under one roof. Yeah. Look for it the next time you get the bright lights for pointy. But I was in the Taco Bell KFC combo building getting my 99 cent fried bowl chicken taco on. And I started to notice this homeless lady out of the corner of my eye. She started kind of purring up on me and, and she was getting closer but the bunk was coming first and she, the bunk and the, and the closest and finally but she's just like right here and I'm like, what? And she goes, do you know anything about mathematics? I'm like, what? Do you, do you know anything about mathematics? I'm like, yeah, so plus water equals clean. Get the F away from me, lady. <laughs> So I go and I sit down and there's a couple sitting across from me that uh, it's a guy and girl, about 19 years old or so, and they're in a big loud fight. And apparently the dude had decided that the relationship was over, because I never thought I would ever hear the words, oh hell no, hell no, I know you didn't just break up with me at the Taco Bell. Because <laughs> as it turns out, even ghetto girls have their standards. I don't know, I gotta tell you, the uh, worst time of the year for me is, uh, is uh, Christmas. I hate waiting in line, or I hate waiting in line, I hate it, I hate it, I hate it so much. 
And um, it's, and it's year round generally, but like my worst time, the worst thing I have to do all week is go to the grocery store. Did you go to Walmart and there's what, 152 checkout lines? And at any given time, two of them are open? You know, I don't know if you guys do what I do. I start going through with my cart and analyzing the people in the line and the crap that they've done in their cart to figure out which line I'm going to get in to get through the quickest. I don't say it loud and clear. I will racial profile like a mofo. You don't even know. You get the first line. It's a black dude. He looks like Ray from Sanford and Son. He's buying a bottle of Ripley. Like, that's going to take a while. And then the next line is a soccer mom with coupons. White pebble bitch. She's going to take a while. Get to the next line. It's a, it, it, it's, a, it's a Mexican lady with 52 kids. They're all screaming. How do you say there's no crying in Spanish at Walmart? Let's go to the next line. It's like line after line after line. You finally get down to the last line. The cashier's Spanish and the, the customer's Asian. And you're just like, there's going to be a freaking communication problem here, you know? You'll be trapped there for the rest of your life. Your best bet, always get in line by the single guy with a six pack of beer, the frozen pizza, the Playboy, and cash in hand. Because that dude has got shit to do, man. You know what I mean? You are home free. <laughs> right, right, exactly. Spoken from experience, sir. Thank you. Uh, I can't see what's on your shopping list, bro. God, wow. Uh, I, uh... <laughs> I, uh, you know, was at Walmart last week, and I sometimes forget that people don't know that I'm a world famous comedian. Whatever, Twin Falls. Um, I forget, you know, and you get to this contest that I'm a comedian, some of you don't think I'm particularly funny, you've been looking at me like I have a dick on my forehead, the lighten up lady is freaking my shit out, I'm a big guy in a small town right now. Like she's just parading the world, like they're gonna drag me from the truck behind after the show. <laughs> Well, you know, sometimes I, and I forget, I, get, I have a big mouth, apparently, and I say things to people, and I forget. See, what happened was, last week, I was at Walmart! I was at the Walmart, mind my business, because you know the days? We love a bargain. We love a bargain. I see that smiley face on the end cap with the rollback. I will just drink the Kool-Aid and give my money to the man every time. I don't care if there's a five-year-old Guatemalan girl singer sewn in the fabric, I'll freaking buy it, you know? I was at Walmart outside my business, and I came around the corner, and there was a black woman, and she had her two-year-old daughter in the car, and the little girl was really amped up, she was really excited, she was just like, hi, 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 you know, and the lady laughed, and I laughed, and she smiled, and I smiled, and I looked at the little girl, and I go, she's adorable, she looks like a young Oprah Winfrey. Oh. Why that reaction, white people? I don't get it. Oprah Winfrey is a beautiful woman. She's an inspiration. I'm not saying it because I'm gay and it's wrong. I have to. I'm saying it because I mean it. I don't understand, but I knew that I was in trouble because the second I said that, she put her hand on her head and gripped her neck back. You all know when a black woman puts her hand on her head and gripped her neck back? That is the international sign for game over. White people started running for their lives. 570 to the back-ass white elephant just in unison out the front door of a Walmart. The lights flipped off, the doors boarded up, the freaking tumbleweed flew by. And here's the thing, any other race or minority will stay and back their people up. I go to IHOP and order Buckley's pancakes too loud. White people will run like a freaking axe murderer is shaking. <laughs> and I knew that I was in trouble, and I gotta tell you, I got mad. I got mad because this lady, she didn't know me, right? She didn't know I wasn't raised like that, okay? I never pushed anyone to the back of the bus. I never said someone's religion is bullshit. I never pushed a woman in the kitchen and said, you know, fix it, fix pop yeah, Okay, I've done that once. I've done that once. But to be fair, my mom should have dinner on the table at six o'clock. Like my dad said. Anyway, so. She didn't know. She didn't know that about me. She didn't know I wasn't like that. What she did know was about eight billion years of oppression, and it was time for a sister to rise up and get loud at Walmart. So I'm standing there, and all the bells and whistles are going off, and she's like, oh, excuse me, is Oprah Winfrey the only black girl you know on the TV? And before I could stop myself, I was like, no! I don't put that duty for back to life! <laughs> And then I ran all the way to Target. Where I did my shop listed now, goddammit. 
I mean, I hate about the holidays over there and the wait in line all the time. I just want to give a shout out tonight. This, this is for all the single people here tonight. On behalf of all the single people here tonight, I want to give a little, uh, some little uh, advice to you married people and people who have children. During the holidays, please stop sending all your single friends photographs of your kids. Okay? It's not that we're not happy for you. It's not that we're not excited about it. Well, at the end of the holiday season, what the hell am I supposed to do with all this? Because I've got a shoebox full of pictures of kids and all. My sister's always, oh, you stick them up on your refrigerator. I'm like, no, that's why my naked firefighters of New York Town do it. I'm already dominating that space, you know. I don't want to get things confused. I don't want to come home at 3 o'clock in the morning and be like, hey, Mr. July, what's the crack of laughing? I don't want to see a picture of fat ass Timmy or his freaking pumpkin costume, okay? But here's the deal. If you're absolutely adamant about sending the photographs, I implore you, for the love of God, please put the first and last name of the child on the back of each and every photograph. I got a stack of pictures of kids and I'm like, who the hell is this? I don't know if these ugly ass kids belong to, you know? And God forbid, God forbid something ever happens to me and the police have to go through my apartment. I'm just saying it! I got a stack of photographs of children I could not identify. So, look a bit shut. Have you ever been to Vegas lately? Yep. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, that's the always the answer is like, yeah, these are exhausted. What the hell happens to people when they go to Vegas? I have no idea. I can tell you where it starts. It starts the second you hit the state line. As soon as you hit the state line, bro, it's done. Forget it. Everything's out the window. Your morals, your money, your integrity, your underwear, it's just out the window. And I was in, uh, I was in Vegas, and I was, I was with a buddy of mine. That's something I've noticed in other places as well, but in particular, it, it was in Vegas. And, and this is more for the guys, because you understand what I'm talking about. It doesn't matter if you're gay straight, and you get this. This is an anti-lady thing, but this happens. I noticed this with some women. When you're at a bar, all you guys are out there hanging out in a crowded bar. You're with all your buddies. You're hanging out. And some girl will pop up out of nowhere and go, Hey, guys, you want a beer? Don't do it. Don't. No, is this a crowded bar? No. There's always one girl that will try to do that shit to you. And my buddies always fall. We're like, no, let's go. And I'm like, no, she's a freaking table snatcher. The table snatcher now. I know what, I know there's a couple of you in here too. Oh, it's so, it's just, you're a table, table snatcher, table twelve, right there, right there, see? No, it's always next to my lunch, I was like, hey, let's go down, you know. The second you get up, you get your back turned, there's some second string broad coming in, throwing handbags and sweaters and shit down like you've been there all night. And then it's out there, fast, man, ah, crap, we gotta stand the rest of the night, this is bullshit. <laughs> I'm getting a little, uh, I'm a little on the, uh, I'm getting a little older and I'm, I'm all good with that. I, uh, <coughs> starting with friends the same age as me. I'm actually technically 39, but I just generally tell people that I'm 40 because 39 just sounds like a fake age. You know what I mean? Nobody believes you when you say you're 39. Come on, bro, you're 42. No, I'm not sure 39, but whatever. <laughs> and I was talking with a female friend of mine, and she was, she had recently hooked up with a 20, 20 year old guy. Now, what do we call a 40 year old woman who hooks up with a 20 year old guy? Cougar, right. A uh, 20 year old gay guy hooked up with a 40 year old gay guy. Guess what that makes me? Pink Panther. Not good, huh? Not good. <laughs> and so much funnier if I didn't remember the rest of the joke. <laughs> oh, that's what I was just talking about. Yeah. So, you know, I'm like, I'm hitting 40, and you know, it's like the, the, the older you get, uh, you, the more you get closer to the. the things that you always said you were going to do when you were a kid, like those really bad, horribly, just terrible threats that you made against your own mother when you were a teenager. You remember those threats, you know? The one that's like, oh, laugh now, old lady, but someday you're going to get real old, and I'm going to put you in a hole. You know, is it my mom? I reminded her about that, at, like, about two weeks ago, and she started making me a cake. Kind of awesome. Because a cake is always good, but a retribution cake is even better. Because she knows it's like, it's a shame pie bitch, you know what I'm saying? So, uh, oh, we're not like Alright, anyway, so, um, yeah, it, it's funny because, uh, you know, like, I don't know, my mom is uh, it's just kind of a little bit of crazy, uh, just, just, just crazy, crazy lady. Uh, God damn it, I wish I could remember the rest of that show too. I'm, I'm striking out here. See? No, okay, you know, anyway. Well, basically, I was just, no, this kind of sucks. 
And it really stuck to you guys. It's fucking hilarious. Um, if I can remember it. <laughs> Probably not. Yeah, no, no. I, uh, I, well, I was doing something else. I'll come back to that. I'll come back to it. We'll get back to it. Um, oh, that's the thing. She made me the cake, and I was basically going to say she beat, she beat the cake batter the way she beat her cake. So that cake would be so light and fluffy. It's just, doo, 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 right out of the house. I can promise. I have, that old lady has knocked me in the next Tuesday so many times. I'm actually visiting you guys from the future right now, just so you know. Uh, I've been news from the future, too. The Cleveland Browns won the Super Bowl. OJ is a free man. And Uncle Winfrey is in the White House. She's not the president. She just bought it. That's all. <laughs> I, uh, I, uh, <laughs> have a roommate. She's, uh, she's kind of a wild mouth uh, New York girl. She's awesome. And, uh, we, they took us up to, what's that place that's, um, uh, right, it's north of uh, Boise, up in the mountains? They took me and her up there for Cascade. You guys went up to Cascade? Wow, super good times. I was a little worried about going up there because it was, you know, I'm like, oh, perfect, the gay guy and the loudmouth New York girl, this is going to end well, right? So I yeah, decided to make a preemptive strike when we got to Cascade, and um, I decided to uh, get all the gays in Cascade to come out to see my show. There were six of them. It was awesome. I Facebook them and everything. So they showed up, and we ended up going to some bar after the show. I don't know if you guys have been to Cascade. A lovely little bar called the Valley Club. Oh my God! I don't want to say this is a redneck bar, but there are people in West Texas that are like, God damn, we don't even do that shit. <laughs> and all of a sudden, some Saturday night saloon break fight just smackdown just. All chairs are flying all over the place. And let me tell you something, the gays got up. Those six gays, they did not even, they're just like, what, bitch, what? You got something to say? What? Like, oh, snap, y'all got some big wilderness lumberjack fight nuts that is up in here. I did not see that coming at all. I was like, what am I, a 12-year-old girl all of a sudden? Am I an Olsen twin? What's wrong, you know? So, we end up, you know, we end up deciding to leave there. We go back to one guy's house. Now, everyone else gets in the car, and me and the drunkest gay, because I always end up hanging out with the drunkest of gays, decide to walk back. Now, I am not put into the equation that we are up in the mountains, up in Cascade, and I am a city boy. I'm a camper. I decide to die when I see street lights and sidewalks disappear. I start to freak out. It's not my thing, you know what I mean? So we start walking back to this guy's house, and all of a sudden, it just gets darker and darker, and the path keeps getting smaller and shorter, and there's more trees growing over, and we're walking, 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 and, we're walking. and it's like a half an hour later, we've gone over the river, through the woods, way past Grandma's house at this point, and I'm like, what kind of jacked up, I know what you did last summer, practice it! So Dante stops and goes, I think we live over there. Over there, where there's nothing. Awesome. Good time. So we start to go through the woods. Now, I'm not a camper, like I said. I'm getting hit in the face. I'm stepping in piles of I don't know what. I got poison ivy. There's trees that I swear to God are going to start throwing apples at me at any moment. It's a Wizard of Oz reference there. I'm saying I'm obligated to make at least one. All right. So we continue walking along, and at this point, that drunk gay turns around to me and says, I'm going to need you to keep on the lookout for wolves. <laughs> awesome news, drunk gay. I have to report that this is the second time I've been in a situation where I've had to keep wolves at bay. The first time was in the city of Los Angeles proper. I have no idea how that happened, but their furry ass is chasing right down Glendale Boulevard. The second time I've been in this situation, the second time I've immediately fumbled around and pulled an ink pen out of my, out of my pants. And the second time, the person I'm with says, what are you going to do with that pen? What am I going to do with the pen? I'm going to push it, and I'm going to freaking stab it between the eyes. I'm going to push into it, and I'm going to run in the opposite direction. What are you going to do? I'm going to sign a freaking autograph at this point, you know? <laughs> so I'm not happy about this. And we just continue walking. We keep walking. We keep walking. And finally, drunk age stops, and he walks in a circle very slowly around me. I'm like, dude, what are you doing? He's like, I think we need to go north. Well, that's great news, Harry. It's not been like planet north. So we continue walking. <laughs> we finally end up, I'm like, this is it. I'm done. I call the guy's boyfriend up. I'm like, well, we're lost in the woods. He's like, don't worry. You're probably closer than you think. Just remember, if you end up in the cemetery, then you went too far. 
Next thing you know, dude, we're in the cemetery. He's like, okay, start talking to me. He's like, no, we're not. I'm like, yeah, we're in the cemetery. No, we're not in the cemetery. Dude, we're in the cemetery. No, we're not in the cemetery. I'm like, bro, that's a tombstone. We're on Rock Square, okay? We're in the cemetery. So, at this point, I'm trying not to panic because I've seen enough horror movies. I know the second you panic, that's when the shit always gets you, right? You know? So I'm trying to walk along, make myself laugh. I'm just walking along, like, woo! And don't get you don't find this funny. He starts yelling. He's like, that's not funny. And I go, that's kind of funny. No, it's not funny. It's not funny at all. The word of advice, the word that's not funny to a stand-up comic in a stressful situation, not the power move. Because at that point, I turned around, I opened up my cell phone, and I said, hey, dude, have you ever seen the Blair Witch Project? He thought, sort of like, yeah, and I took the cell phone light and put it right in my notes. He's like, oh, God, it's so scary. <laughs> <laughs> we were back in his house in 2.5 seconds. It was awesome. We're not on time. Oh, okay, cool. All right. I got two more, then I'll get out of here. Um, all right, so stand-up comedy isn't paid the way I wanted to pay it. I was sitting on a lot of odd jobs to make ends meet. True story, folks, last October, I hit rock bottom. A friend of mine called me up and asked me if I wanted to work in a haunted house. You know the haunted houses they got everywhere at Halloween? And I was like, I don't know, dude, I'm 39 years old. That's a little weird. He's like, Kyle, no, bro, you like it, man. It's attached to a gay bar. <laughs> oh! to a gay bar, so this is a gay haunted house. Well, that changes everything for me. I mean, I get to jump out, get back, and touch people in the purple in the dark. Take it, I am so damn happy, I practically skipped down to this gig, right? Now I get down there, I'm an hour and a half early, I'm in my scary little skeletor outfit, I'm just gonna jump out at anybody that comes by. And I hate perpetuating stereotypes with gay men because they're there for a reason. Because I'm telling you guys, the bigger they are, the harder they fall, right? You big burly leather guy who's walking like, yeah, that's cool, that's cool, you're like, boom, like, ah! off running like a bunch of little bitches, right, you know? A little Latino gay boy for his friend, I'm like, oh, Neo, that's not funny, I'm like, no. He's usually popping, he's just rolling by. They need to get spanked or nothing, you know what I'm saying? Now, the place is attached to a bar. They come in and bring us drinks all night. So, by the end of the night, as you can imagine, we were wasted. And he was not late until you've seen four drunk, pissed off gay ghosts. You know what I'm saying? We're just in the corner like, Hello! There are a few things that are scary about working in a gay haunted house besides the obvious fact that you're already freaking working in a gay haunted house. Number one, the moths coming from inside were real and had absolutely nothing to do with the ghost whatsoever. That's right, if the coffins are knocking, don't come a knocking. I learned that one the hard way. Number two, this is vital information that can pass upon to you fine folks there in Twin Falls tonight. Should you ever actually find yourself working in a gay haunted house, don't ask me if it can happen. <laughs> Don't ever, ever, ever scare the lesbians. It turns out they don't like it so much. It turns out what they'll do is they'll kick a bitch, is what they'll do. Because apparently Betty Bigrig wasn't ready for the Halloween shout out I gave her. And her life partner seems to like that. Walking me. <laughs> Shoot me right in the noun. <laughs> I refer to this area as now because it's a person, place, or a thing. All right, so sometimes the verb. All right. <laughs> All right, so I get out of here. I, I can uh, I can either leave out here. I can either go nice and nice, or I can go for the dick joke. What do I do? Playing balls. All right, round of applause for nice and nice. One. Okay, great. One of us needs a half an hour. All right, so um. <laughs> Alright, can I talk about the water for a second? Alright, this is yeah. not, not okay. This isn't anti anything. I want you guys to completely hear me out on this. This is not, this is not anti religion, not anti This is a social observation I have made. Alright, I used to live in San Diego. I then moved to Los Angeles and I now live here in Idaho. So consequently, I know a lot of Mexican folks, I know a lot of Jewish folks, and now I know a freaking grip of Mormons. I don't know what it is about Mexicans, Jews, and Mormons, but they're going to tell me that they're Mexicans, Jews, and Mormons. Why they don't know? You know what I mean? It's like, hey, Matt, you know I'm Mexican, right? Yeah, Vicky Christina Barcelona, I figured it out. 
Oh, you know, I'm a Jew, right? Yes, you look like David from Dirty Dancing. I got it, you know? You know I'm a Mormon, right? Yeah, Jared, you just went right in my front closet door. I did the math on it, okay? You understand that's like Shaquille on the other end, like, hey man, you know?